Next method of treatment is dialysis. Dialysis make it possible to continue living with end-stage kidney disease for many years or even decades. There are two main types of dialysis, hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. Hemodialysis is a procedure where a dialysis machine and special filter called an artificial kidney or dialyzer are used to clean blood instead of open kidneys, which doesn't, which doesn't work at all. To get blood into dialyzer, doctor needs to make specific access entrance into the blood vessel. It is done with minor surgery in the arm. Then dialyzer and filter, uh, it has pa two parts. In one, it's mm, for one, your blood in one washing fluid called dialysate and we have thin membrane which separates these two parts and blood cells, protein and other important things, they are remains in the body, whereas toxic substance, urea, toxic waste products which are present in blood, they are moving through membrane and washed away. Usually in countries and in cities have specific dialysis centers in which hemodialysis is realized because it's not routine procedure, it is not in every hospital present, but only in specific medical centers. How quickly we must do this? Usually it's required three times per week and procedure lasts about four hours every time. And this hem showing what is happened. So it's patient hands and specific access for uh, dialyzer. And we have first way when blood removed for cleaning, it's moved to specific, uh, to specific uh, compartment with dialysis solution, blood pumped, blood uh, have uh, also get, get uh, geparin to prevent clotting, and dialyzer in flow pressure monitor present, and then dialyzer itself seen, it which process present, and used dialysis solution also, and then cleared blood is coming back with a specific venous pressure monitor with automatic lamp. Finally, blood returned to the patient bloodstream. Another way is peritoneal dialysis. Peritoneal dialysis, uh, in this case, blood doesn't clean outside the body but it is progress, it is process which present inside in abdominal cavity. Abdominal cavity is hollow space surrounding the organs in the abdomen and with the help of dialysis fluid it is possible to do. Patients are given a special abdominal catheter, about two filter, liters of dialysis fluid is transported into abdominal cavity through this catheter. After some time this fluid is then removed and replaced with new dialysis fluid. Why it is possible? Because peritoneal uh, the, uh, area is lined by uh, peritoneal cells and they perform function as membrane. And this process is going through like membrane process. This type of dialysis can also be done at home and this method is more, uh, it, it is less effective but it is more available method. Two basic methods are used in peritoneal dialysis. We have standard method, it's called continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, when fluid is manually exchanged three to four times per day and no machine is needed. But we must get extensive training from medical professionals to learn how to uh, uh, put to handle catheter hygienically and so on. The abdomen is always filled with dialysis fluid in this case. And uh, if we don't want to do exchange the fluid during the day or we don't have this opportunity to do because work patient or another causes, uh, we can use uh, automatic method of peritoneal dialysis uh, every night instead. Here catheter is connected to a device called a cycler that regularly ex exchange dialysis fluid. And this is scheme showing how this works. We can see abdominal cavity on the slides 
scheme and we can see uh, catheter and fluid dialysat it's fluid to clean and drain it's finally what is eradicated evacuated from peritoneal area and this is cells mesothelium cells which are the which play role of membrane uh, in one side we have peritoneal cavity in another side peritoneal capillaries and in capillaries it's bloodstream uh, we have toxic substance which move to peritoneal cavity and we have glucose lactase and some useful component moving inside to capillaries uh, from peritoneal cavity so that we have this exchange uh, which make uh, work uh, which help us to uh, clean patient of his toxic substance if his kidney doesn't work properly kidney transplant next method which used in eight stage kidney disease it is kidney transplant is the transfer of healthy kidney from one person into the body of person who has little or no kidney function who can have a kidney transplant most people who need a kidney transplant are able to have one regardless of the age as long as they are well enough know withstand the effects of surgery or transplant has a relatively good, good chance for success or if person is able to comply with the recommended treatment required after the transplant such as taking immunosuppressive medications, attending regular follow-up appointments and reasons why it may not be safe or effective to perform a transplant it's having of some ongoing infections it must be treated firstly or severe heart diseases in decompensations cancers, tumors that has spread to several places into the body or AIDS. Kidney donations. Unlike many other types of organ donation, it is possible to donate a kidney while person is patient is alive because it's only one kidney is need to survive. This is known as a living donation. People who want to be considered as a kidney donors are carefully tested to ensure that they are suitable for this procedure and are fit for the operation needed to remove a kidney. Ideally, living donations will come from a close relative because they are more likely to share the same tissue type and blood group as the recipient, which reduces the risk of the body rejection the kidney. Kidney donations are also possible from people who have recently died. It's also known as deceased kidney donation. However, this type of kidney donation is slightly lower change of long-term success. People who need a kidney transplant but don't have suitable living donor will have to wait until a suitable deceased donor kidney becomes available. They are in waiting list at this period and usually at this time they are getting dialysis to prolong his life until they get donor's kidneys. And it's maybe duration lasts in one, two, three years, maybe more, it's different, but usually this method is effectively uh, and it's very helpful for such patients. Let's conclude. What do we know about chronic kidney disease now? Chronic kidney disease, it is glomerular, it's a uh, disease with decreased glomerular filtration, less than 60, with presence of markers of kidney damage at least three months. We have some specific formula for checking glomerular filtration rate, and we also have albumin level to check for this. It is important. We have some specific signs specific and non-specific for example hypertension and uremia are early hypertension and edema are early signs whereas uremic symptoms are late management of chronic kidney diseases de depend on stage of disease depend on risk factors and many others and we must 
uh, use different approaches in treatment. In early stage, we treat risk factors, we modify patient, we control him and make follow-up, we use range of medications with nephroprotective agents, with other methods, and in late stage, we can do only uh, hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis, and kidney transplant. But it is absolutely possible to achieve slow down progression and to uh, avoid uh, end-stage problems if we start treatment in early stage and to do this we must recognize problem in early stage and this is absolutely possible to do if we are qualified doctors and I believe that after this lecture we will be these doctors. Thank you so much for watching. I believe it was useful for you. See you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.